Hey, Steven on here doing the junkyard crawl at Berniston Auto Wrecking in Berniston, Massachusetts. Getting upstaged again by Kayween Katie. Ah, opposable thumbs. Yeah, I get these, you'll never have them. Anyway, this is a 2000 Volkswagen Jetta. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't care. But when I see VR6 on the back, that means there's something special happening at the other end of the car. Now, what that means, of course, you know, in Volkswagen land, historically, the Volkswagen engine's in the back, the Beetle, right? Well, when you get into the modern era of the Volkswagen Rabbit, Scirocco, uh, et cetera, 1970s up, the engine's up front, and that's where the money's at on this thing. We'll talk about that in a second. You gotta remember that the Volkswagen uh, Jetta arrived in 1979 as an evolution of the Rabbit slash Golf, and really had the same bones, but instead of having a hatchback like a Golf or a Rabbit, the Jetta was of the three box configuration for those people People who just wanted a traditional microscopic sedan, if you will, with a trunk lid uh, and a regular box body. Now, there were seven generations of the Jetta and 15 million still building them, still growing strong, but this is a fourth gen, which were between 1999 and 2004. And again, this is the fourth gen, the first one available with a V6. We'll get to that in a second, but before we go there, you know, when the trunk's open, we got to dig in and have a look. So on this one here, let's open the trunk and see if it's the Lindbergh baby or Jimmy Hoffa or nothing. Okay, well, we have a, we have a Volkswagen Jetta or a Volkswagen catalog here from 1985. And this again shows Volkswagen's humble beginnings, the Golf slash Rabbit, the Cabriolet, the Jetta, I believe the Quantum, the Scirocco, Dasher, maybe the Vanna Gons, the uh, Conestoga, whatever they call that thing. But inside, here we have it. Here, the, the whole point is that the Rabbit slash uh, Golf on the left, the same basic bones, the A pillar, the fenders, everything, the same rear door. And again, on the Jetta on the right, again, the three box platform front, middle, rear. Uh, very specific to the American market. They made them for the world, but they were big sellers here. But same rear door was used on the Jetta as on the Dasher slash Rabbit. Rabbit, there you go, not Dasher. Dasher was a sports car. But anyway, inside the trunk here, yeah, just, what is this? Just styrofoam stuff. This is the spare tire filler. But the amazing thing about, oh, the 80s onward and 70s is how basically uh, the synthetic materials, no more metal. This is a structure that in steel would probably weigh about 25 pounds, something like that. This is the spare tire filler panel, but made of expanded styrofoam. Look at this thing. It does the job very well, and yet it's light. So again, the engineering less is more really kind of became a mainstream thing on all cars, but again, this Jetta is kind of neat. Let's look around here. Uh, something new for the uh, fourth generation Jetta was this here, the Whip Tenna. And you can see here, they should have done more validation work on the plastic. These things always disintegrate, but we can see inside the wires that help the antenna do its receptive job of picking up radio signals. But the Whip Tenna was something to replace the fender mounted antennas of previous Jettas. And the idea was that it wouldn't have the wind noise, or if it did make wind noises up here, we wouldn't hear it. More aerodynamic, but but lots of little things. Another thing too about the fourth generation Jetta was the rounded body, which kind of presaged the new Beetle, which was also a rounded form. Uh, the third generation Jetta was more angular, boxy. Now something inside of this that's kind of cool is the five-speed manual transmission. And uh, there was a four-speed automatic for 875 bucks more. But again, this is a V6 five-speed stick. And the speedometer on this thing reads to 160 miles per hour. These will go 130. Oh yeah, they will. That 7,500 RPM tachometer, not that uh, optimistic. These were truly a radical departure from the third generation Jetta. Again, first Jetta right here, the fourth gen, 1999 onward, was an available V6. Now, Four-wheel disc brakes seen on these things, kind of cool. Plenty of clamping power, braking power. Uh, steel wheels were certainly standard. There were optional alloys. Uh, and hubcaps would have been found on this one. But again, it's a four-door. And of course, front-wheel drive. Pretty big discs on this thing. These look like they're probably about 11 or so inches. Same stuff you'd find on a Hemi Cuda. Same size, gotta say. Front-wheel drive. There's the McPherson strut. You know, front-wheel drive stuff. Uh, but again, here is the fascia of this and getting back to styrofoams and plastics this is the inner bumper structure made entirely of plastic very light and yet designed to conform but that's a really hard plastic i'm not sure what this stuff is but it's a modern uh, era plastic it's not styrene this stuff does not crack easily but again that's underneath the nose 
And for easy model year updates, the fascia is made of urethane. This stuff right here, which the beauty of this is that it's very flexible. Right there, you know, and yet you can make upgrades and have like, you know, the, the base car, the, the cool sporty one by just adding more flair. And again, very light and impact resistant, not as easily damaged as a steel nose. But again, bet getting to this V6 engine. Now, most people think of a V6. We'll swap spots here, Captain Shane, Super Shane Richardson, cameraman extraordinaire. And as we lift the hood, when you think V6, you know, you think 90 degree V6, maybe GM 60 degree. This is a 15 degree V6. In other words, it's almost an inline, but not quite. The point of that was a very narrow engine designed specifically for transverse installations. The crank runs this way instead of north-south, so it's a narrow engine. And this one here is a two valve, so this uh, six times two, 12 valves. In Europe, there was a four valve version of this, which was a little wider, but with that said, this is a 15 degree V6 right here. It's 2.8 liters, 174 horsepower, which is why this will go 130 miles per hour and zero to 60 in 6.9 seconds with that five-speed manual. Uh, the Ram tuned intake manifold, we can see right here, it has the long runners. Uh, it's designed to bolster torque, but the crazy thing, the V6 on this, the heads, or the, the banks are so close together, it takes one head and one head gasket, kind of interesting. In fact, there was also a five cylinder version of this V6. So it's kind of an inline, but it's 15 degrees. Like I say, it's not like a 60 degree or 90, it's that close. But this same basic architecture uh, forms the bones of the, uh, the Bentley W12 and the Bugatti Veyron's W16, very closely related. You gotta remember that Volkswagen is the parent company of Bugatti and Bentley. When we look at this one, it's kind of hanging here out in space. Somebody has begun the task of disassembling and removing it. But again, uh, the beauty of this is it's very narrow. Here's the clutch on this end, the flywheel right inside of there, waiting to be uh, either harvested or who can say. Uh, and again, you know, very effective architecture, you know, front engine vehicles, front wheel drive. I believe the, uh, the, the, the Mini Cooper, the Austin Mini, 1959-60 British Motor Corporation was one of the first mass produced uh, transverse front wheel drive vehicles. And the beauty of front wheel drive really on anything is the entire mechanical area of the car is ahead of the firewall, leaving the rest of the car for the job of moving human beings, which is what a car is all about, right? Well, yes, but the only downside of the front wheel drive cars is, you know, without the rear wheel drive uh, aspect. They're not as much fun to drive, but for utilitarian purposes, pretty cool. But again, this is 174 horsepower, the first V6 available in the Jetta. And of course, now they're V6s, turbo fours, all kinds of cool stuff, but humble beginnings right here, but zero to 60 in 6.9 seconds with that five-speed manual transmission. So when you see the VR6, that's a six cylinder in your Volkswagen uh, uh, Jetta. And I think the, pa the Passat, the larger ones had a similar engine to this one right here. And even, even, I think the, uh, the, the uh, new Beetle had a five cylinder turbo, which is possible. I'm not sure if the V6 ever made it into the, the new Beetle or not. Not sure, you can certainly inform me. But yeah, moving from the humble people mover with the uh, rear mounted four banger of the 1950s, 60s, 70s, Volkswagen moved from strength to strength. And again, 15 million of these things, and they're still in production. And I think the 14th generation of the, uh, the Volkswagen uh, Jetta. So if you like this video, that's the story of how Volkswagen's not as square and uncool as you might think. These are the beginnings of Volkswagen's cool era. Although owners of Volkswagen Rabbit GTIs of the 1980s might disagree, but they had like maybe 95 horsepower. This is 174 horsepower. This is a 130 mile an hour car, like no rabbit ever would be. But if you like this video, be sure to tell your friends, share it with your friends, give us a thumbs up, and hit the bell so you know when the next video hits, which is tomorrow morning.